Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Fear the Walking Dead. A lot of really interesting things going down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we are picking up with John and June. Uh, this is like, tw- well, it's initially it was 25 days, them under in that little bunker that Teddy had planned. And, you know, them living day by day. Obviously, you know, they drink, they eat. Uh, obviously, he tries to reach out to people on the radio. It's interesting finding out later on that June was kind of against him doing that. I thought she would kind of be a little more for... I guess, like, she... I guess, well, we didn't get to see those 24 prior days or whatever, so... But obviously for her, it's like, okay, like marking down like how a di- another day off the, the calendar of like, right, it's going to take this long for all the air up there to kind of clear enough for us to be okay. I mean, granted, who knows if it will ever be like, once again, she gave this rough timetable, but I thought like, you know, once again, I'm basing all of this on like the 100 and stuff. It's like, well, it took like a hundred y- or so years for like Earth to become okay again. And in other cases, it's like, oh, it took a lot longer, uh, depending on where you are in the series uh, when it comes to the 100. But nevertheless, um, you could tell, like, it is just, it's just kind of like them and, like, having some routine, you know? And um, obviously, it's the sad conversation, too, of, like, right, I know I'm not the Dory that you thought you were going to spend the rest of your days with. But she's like, yeah, but it, it's okay. And he's like, yeah, and Trippie told us. Uh, despite everything for uh, John, it's like this isn't too, uh, it ain't too bad, you know, day by day here. But just living these routine days, but then it starts seeming like, especially because like the ceiling, like dirt started coming down. So I'm just like, is it, this bunker's not going to hold like it was supposed to? So they have less time. But a uh, hole in the wall is revealed, and it turns out it's uh, where Teddy did his work, where he uh, killed and embalmed all those women. And. Obviously, despite knowing before at least Teddy was locked up, now you know he's dead. You saw him dead, but the problem is John can't forget because there was just one, at least he's like, there might have been more victims, but they were aware of 23 of his victims. Sadly, they only ever found 22. The one they never found, the one he never found was Cindy. And at this point is when it really starts to haunt him because it's like, no, like, uh... He's like, I have to find her because I made a promise to her mom I'd have to find her. But it's like, you you can't. Like, it's been decades and there's no guarantee that you will. She June initially wanted him just to seal the room back up because it's just a reminder. Just because for him, it's like, I mean, because I'm sure there's plenty of regrets. It's like, because Teddy, his connection to Teddy, it's like that that case is what took him away from his child, took him away from his son. You know, and it's like, yeah, they're like John's letter to June, like made it so that he forgave his dad. Sure. But I'm sure there's some level. They didn't really go over it in this episode, but that's a tie to this as well. It's like unfinished business when it came to Teddy. Like it's the it's the whole thing that haunted him because it's also the case that he crossed the line that changed everything. It changed him. It made him leave his family and just like that regret I'm sure all that is amalgamated in like, right, I couldn't be there for my son. I couldn't help my son, but I can, I, and I couldn't help any of his victims, but this one, I can do something about. I can lay her to rest. Like, her soul will never rest, which is interesting because there's a conversation about that a little bit um, currently in the uh, world beyond. Um, Asha believes in like, yeah, there's, well, at least maybe, maybe, whether it's her or whether it's also her mom believes that there's still souls. So, like, by killing the dead, you're, you're, freeing their souls because they're trapped in there so whether john's really thinking that far but it's just like in general he feels like he owes it to her but june just wants to lock the room up because it's like right it's not nothing can be done for it like you've already taken care of teddy like like he's already gone you've dealt with him well you dealt with him before it's like yeah but that was like a yeah but then he ended up getting well not releasing he he got he escaped the prison when everything well during the fall and then he was allowed to run rampant and do everything he did by, you know, it. I mean, it's also like Teddy kind of wanted him in because, like, the state the world is in right now. Granted, he's not alive to partake in it, but still. 
and it's starting to all take a toll on John of like he started hearing stuff and you're like oh like part of you is like is it a medical condition we find out no it's because he went cold turkey and he's starting to hallucinate because he was looking for the alcohol but it all broke well it turns out because before June and him found him like he was drinking like half a bottle a day and drinking some here and there you know, and he thought like, right, I thought there was enough to last, but then it was like, nope, well, and even if there was, it's all gone now, and so he, that's why his hands are starting to shake, he's going through withdrawal, to the point that he got this suit, and he went up top, because he thought he heard her, but he just kept seeing stuff, well, he found Teddy's body, and he found Dakota, which I'm actually surprised at, Go, well, we saw Dakota, like, when that initial drop and what it did to her, but it's like, yeah, she was still a like she was a walker because she it killed her, yes, but it didn't like it, her body wasn't incinerated because she wasn't near the major, she wasn't in the epicenter, <clears throat> and so John like you know kills her, being like, yeah, you're the one, you're also one I couldn't save, but at least he could, he, he might not have been able to save her, but at least he can like put her to rest on some level. But also, she's not the one, like, he made the big promise to. So he's trying to find Cindy, but he's seeing stuff that's not there. He thought he saw Cindy, but it's a walker. And luckily, June came up top and saved him. But uh, those Skinners, they end up finding finding them. So at first, I was like, well, you don't I was like, no, I don't think they're um, Victor's people. I think they're the other people that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Victor encountered. Which, obviously, we still have no idea who they are and what their whole thing is. But... Obviously, June's freaking out because I think, obviously, she cares about John and it's like, right, let me make sure you're not bit. Let me make sure you're okay. Like, why are you, like, obviously, it's like you're hallucinating because you're you're going through withdrawal. But I think it's also like, John Sr. is our only ties to John Jr. And I think that's why it's extra, like, reason to keep him alive. Like, you know, it's like why it's so important. Like, no, 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 I need you to stay alive. I don't need you to get hurt. I don't want anything to happen to you. Because it's like, you you know, because he even says on the radio, it's like, oh, I'm John Dory Sr. And I'm here with my daughter-in-law, June. It's like, yeah. Like, you know, it's like you are you are the only family she has that she at least knows. She doesn't know where everyone else is, but at least she has you in front of her. And it's at least some part of John she can still hold on to is, you know, right there in front of her. And so she wants to make sure he's okay. Like, she, there's a part of her that needs him to be okay. But... It's all taking its toll on him, despite them trying to, like, take things slow. She's like, yeah, I could basically give you a sedative that, that would knock you out a couple days and get you through the worst parts of the withdrawal. But despite everything, like, he can't concentrate. He can't let it go. Even to the point in that room, he's seeing um, Cindy. And it's like, right, like, you want me to leave you alone? Come find me, please. And so... June barricades the room, but in the process, like, he just couldn't let it go. Like, the voices wouldn't get any quieter. She wouldn't leave him alone. It's like, the only way I'm going to think straight is if I find her, I owe it to her. Um, once again, it's just, whether it's just, you know, a combination of just the hallucinations because of his own guilty conscience about it. Because it, honestly, it gave him something else to think about. It gave him something else to focus on other than, a, like, I think just, like, the mundane, like, routine of just, like, right... I mean, at least that gave him something to look forward to again, but it's like now his mind is focused on this, and that's all he can, like, he can't quiet her voice, he can't quiet anything until he finds her, but eventually part of that um, bunker collapses, and June gets caught underneath it, but it's like, you know, it's like, oh, I need to check on June, it's like, no, no, you know, Cindy's in his head, she's fine, but I'm not, you made a problem, it's like, find me first, and then you, then you can help her, it's like, see, she's breathing, it's okay, and then he starts piecing it together, it's like, okay, I thought you got snatched here, were you, she's like, no, and he's like, well, you had your necklace, she's like, yeah, I didn't want to go anywhere without it, like, you know, and she talked about going to her boyfriend's, it's like, okay, we did talk to your boyfriend at the time, and, um, and he's just running through it all, but then June's awake, but then, like, I mean, Cindy is a manifestation of, like, a hallucination, but it is also his subconscious, so he is picking up certain details and ends up revealing that June made up, because that's why I was kind of like, I don't, rem well, because we know there's, they can only be out there a limited amount of time, but, um, because she had read the books, because she was like, oh, because of different types of radiation, we don't know if it's really safe up there. But, like, Cindy in his head is like, no, 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 she's lying to you. And it turns out she was. I was like, no, Cindy's just getting, it's like, oh, no, 
you that once again that is your subconscious telling you you knew something was off but you didn't want it like no nah, it's june so i'm a truster but it's like now you were like in his mania in his um in his withdrawal state of him not thinking clearly his subconscious is like leaking what he was already thinking like his subconscious was already getting those inklings before but now it's coming to the forefront because he's in a erratic state right now and it turns out it wasn't just for his sake, the reason why she wanted to stay down here, because she's like, we don't know what's up there, you know, we don't know, there's nothing left up there, but it's because she didn't want to go back up there, because at least down here, she knows what to expect of every day, it's a routine, it's the same thing over and over again, we saw it from day 25 to day, what, 69 or whatever, well, ultimately to day 70, well, 69 is when things start shifting up, but then, like, it goes to at least, like, 71 is when things started, well, when John started going a little... Uh, crazy because of the withdrawal, but she doesn't want to go back up there without her John, you know, and it's like, oh, dude, I mean, because she's, she, it's been one thing after another, like, since John's death, like, I think it gave her, like, she didn't really know, like, what her purpose was, she didn't know uh, what direction she was going in without him, at least, like, there were other things that kind of, like, her hatred of, like, um, Victoria, not, uh, Virginia, I was about to say Victoria, but Virginia, like, that, like, even though she killed her, like, at least that kept her going, at least it was able to point her in another direction, it was, like, making sure everything going else was okay, but now it's, like, with everything being as it is, not knowing what the state of that world is, like, everything's unpredictable, but the one thing she knows for sure is the world topside is a world without John, and she doesn't know what that's going to be like for her every day, having to, you know, at least before, like, it was already a struggle before in, in the aftermath of everything. Probably also not knowing where everyone is. It's like you're kind of alone in this. And at least you have John Sr. Like I said, some ties to your John with him. So it's like, I'm fine with staying here. I don't want to go up there just to be a constant reminder that I don't have John, you know? So I think when John Sr. brought up, like, right, I know I'm not the door you want it. It's like, it probably struck a nerve because it's like, right. But I, I don't need to think about it. I don't want to think about it, you know? But John Sr. leaves her um, despite everything. It's just because he's like, right, I got to help her and I'll come back and save you. And he goes topside and he's planning on trying to find Cindy. But those Skinners come back and they're breaking and they're making their way through the hatch. And she's like, no, 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 you made your promise to me. Save me. But he's like, no, this isn't real. I can't save you, but I can save her. It's like, no, you can't. And he's, he kills the two of them. But then he also gets surrounded by the walkers and they're manifested as all of Teddy's victims. It's like, you could save them and you can't save her. She's just another body buried, you know. But he finally snaps through and he's like, you know, at one point you do see his hands stop shaking. He's like, no, this isn't real. That's what allowed him to focus and shoot at least two and, and kill uh, two of those Skinners. But then like... He grabs the knife he left in Dakota and starts killing all the walkers. And luckily, he got to uh, June in time. Obviously, uh, the state of the bunker, they can't stay there anymore. They have no idea who these people are. Uh, but in the process of saving her, he finds... Uh, they find Cindy's body. She was buried in the wall. And, it, and I, I think that's kind of... It, obviously, it's meant to be like, right, all this searching, you know, all that, all those years ago, you did all this searching. Because the whole thing was like, it all comes full circle because he was like, right, the entire time we were looking for the place that uh, Teddy did his killings and uh, embalming stuff, it was right here under our feet the entire time. And lo and behold, Cindy was there as well because like, Teddy probably panicked and didn't have time to like pose her like he did the others. So he just buried her in a uh, wall and she's been here the entire time. You know, but at the very least, she's like, you know, June's like, you were able to keep your promise, uh, John. And he's like, not fully. And he was, a, then he finally puts like the necklace on her. And it's like, yeah. So at least she's, she's, she's found because like, she might not get a proper burial well, to some extent, but I think it's more so like, right, you were found and you were never forgotten, you know? Um, and I think it at least does John some good going forward. It eases his consciousness about like, Right, the one he couldn't find, and it it at least I think alleviates probably at least some of like it finally like closes this chapter on Teddy form. I'm granted they're always going to be living in the aftermath of Teddy because of the state of the world, so that's what that comes down to. But well, 
We'll, we'll have to wait and see on John's story whether like, but I think this was him finally being able to put the whole Teddy thing to rest. He doesn't know if there were other victims, but at the very least, this was one more he was aware of that they just were never able to find. Find and that guilt just has always stayed with him. That you know, I mean, and once again, like what this case, what Teddy in general cost him. Just, you know, on a personal level, just on, like, who he is of having to cross that line when it came to Teddy, but also the state of, like, right, like, my son being gone and everything, like, I mean, he lost, he lost his family, he lost himself to his family, you know? But, obviously, they can't stay in a bunker, so they're about ready to leave, even though June doesn't want to, but they don't have much of a choice. Sadly, as they were about to leave, the bunker gets buried, but lo and behold, John wakes up in a bed, and it's been a couple of days, and you're like... Victor found them. And lo and behold, and Victor comes in being like, hey, and it's like, oh, and John's just like, not the happy, he's like, ah, Victor, and it's like, yeah, how'd you, yep, uh, I'm rebuilding everything, he's like, I don't know who those people are, but, and he's like, well, he does have a cop in his hand, uh, on his hand, so it's like, hey, you can, um, serve as helping me figure it out, because he does have the detective skills, and I think at the very least, It'll give him a distraction from his current circumstances because, you know, it's like, he's like, we should leave, we shouldn't stay here. But June's like, kind of don't have much of a choice. And it's like, right, he's barricaded the outside. He's created essentially a moat of uh, the dead. So it's an appearance force. It's like, yeah, we're in here. Morgan's out there. And it's like, you also said that too, like, of like, kind of like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm also, I also know where Morgan is, but he's out there somewhere. So. So they know, like, Morgan's at least okay to some extent. Like, well, they know him and Grace are okay, so. But now it's just a conversation. Like, no, 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 you guys rest. But then we'll we'll kind of build things going forward. But John also turns down the drink. He's like, yeah, I'm, a, I'm off the sauce for now. It's just like, no, like, I need to be. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm like that again. It's like, no, I need to be at my best to make sure that me. I got it because it's not just me I'm looking after. I got to look after June. This is essentially my daughter and I gotta I gotta look after her because that's what my boy would want you know that's what I want in general so but they are kind of stuck there granted we don't know how how much of the crew is going to well because we already know like once again like a good chunk of the crew's off with the whole like CR situation but amongst everyone that's still in that relative area the only people unaccounted for is well because we know um uh, Dwight and Sherry are in the general area. Somewhat. We know that we know where they are. Uh they're still underground, so we gotta check in with them. But they're the them they're the only other ones still in the relative area. Cause we don't have no idea where Alicia is currently, so and that's stuff to uh, uh keep in mind. But at the end, Morgan he had heard John and June on the radio and he found his way to them. But, you know, sadly, he got there too late. And that, I think that's the interesting thing. I mean, maybe there's kind of supposed to be commentary in that of just like, right, Victor was able to get to them first. It's like, because Victor's like, yeah, I, I saved him. Like, where you failed, I will pick up. And, you know, your failure, Morgan, it's like, well, at the state of this world isn't on me. This is on you. He's like, I don't see it that way. I'm like, hot, you know, because I think it's like, if you were really the hero you claim to be, Morgan, you would have, like, stopped all this from happening in the first place. But I guess it's kind of like, the world's gonna be a better place because I am gonna help it rise from the ashes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the good. I'm gonna be the one who, uh, I'm the one who's gonna save the day. I'm gonna be the hero this time. I played the role of the, the, the anti-hero, the villain for a while. Now I, I mean, once again, no one's the villain of their story, so he definitely doesn't see himself. But he sees himself as kind of a savior. But he says like, I'll pick up the ones who are worth picking up. But um. But I'm going to do everything that you couldn't, which, and these, this is the line from the trailers that I love so much. He's like, really? I, Morgan's like, I hope you do. I hope you do help people. I hope you do save people. Um, I really do hope you go about rebuilding the world. But at the end of the day, if I find out you're not doing that, if I find out that you're hurting anyone, I can't, like, oh, what are you going to do, Morgan? He's like, oh, I'm going to find you and I'm going to do to you what you tried to do me to me on the sub. But unlike you, I won't miss. And just Victor's like, there's almost that look of I'm Victor where he's almost like probably concerned because it's like, because uh, I, it's just idle threats, but also it's like, it is Morgan, you know, the man's been through a lot, not just fear the walking dead, but everything he's been through, through the walking dead has gotten, it's gotten him this far where he is now, despite everything. So 
He's just like, bring it. And I'm like, but I think there is probably going to be some part of his brain, just like Virginia. Like, that's why she sent people after Morgan. It's like, no, I need to make sure he's dead. I don't need him coming after me. It's like, well, I'm curious to see what he does because he knows Virginia made that mistake and it came back to haunt her. So I think Victor's probably going to make more of a point to send people after. I mean, we know like, um, once again, I think his name's Elijah, but I could be wrong. We met his twin brother last episode. So we know he's gunning for Morgan and if Victor can get him on his side, it's like, right. Oh, you're after, you're after, uh, Morgan Jones. Go right ahead. I could give you what you need to, to go after him type of thing. So I'm but like I said, it's just, it is almost like sad that it's just like, right, June and um, John, it's like, right, Morgan just was a little too late. And if he only, he couldn't, um, you know, it's just the, the fact is that Victor got to them first. It just speaks volumes. So. Once again, whether or not he gets to Dwight and Sherry, as well as that family that Dwight and Sherry are with, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, I've avoided looking at the preview, so I don't even know who we're jumping to next. I don't want to know, but... Um, I'm uh, I'm very excited about, uh, to ultimately see where um, everything ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Until next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.